Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 12th of October 2020 and the time has just gone 9.59 for the summer time. And it's been a fairly quiet week, start to the uh, to the trading week. Um, slightly optimistic mood um, in Europe. We had a pretty decent finish to Friday in terms of uh, US equities and European equities. There seems to be some uh, hope and optimism in relation to um, the possibility of the US politicians agreeing on a coronavirus uh, relief package, although no great details have been uh, have been announced. Um, at the back end of last week, on Friday, President Trump tweeted out saying that the, uh, the talks are progressing. You know, as always, the US, the US leader is a bit light on detail. Uh, we heard that the Republicans um, increased their uh, proposal from a stimulus package of $1.6 trillion to $1.8 trillion. Uh, keep in mind, the Democrats are pushing for a package or a scheme worth $2.2 trillion, so there's still quite a long way to go. But nonetheless, the fact that the Republicans up there up there offer um, is a step in the, in the right direction nonetheless. Um, so that, that obviously had a positive finish, positive um, influence on US markets uh, at the back on, on Friday. We're seeing a bit of that spill over uh, to Europe today. To be honest, it's a bit, a bit quiet. Um, the health situation is still kind of a health crisis and concerns about uh, restrictions is still bobbing away in the background. Um, but also this week is, is going to be a big, is potentially going to be a big week in relation to UK EU talks, uh, which I mentioned in the week ahead. In the week ahead uh, article, uh, essentially, a few weeks ago, um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson of the UK stated that if a meaningful, meaningful trade deal or meaningful deal hasn't been mapped out by the 15th of October, the British negotiating team will walk away from discussions. So this could be a, a very big week for UK, UK EU talks. You know. Both sides have talked about how progress has been made, but both sides have also said that they want to have the right deal uh, and differences remain. So it's, it's, it's got, it has the potential to be a big week uh, for, the EU, for the UK EU trade, talk, trade talks. Um, what I'll do is now, uh, I'll have a quick look at the week ahead article and then run through some of the big markets. So starting off with the week, week ahead article, which can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under insights, under latest news and analysis. Uh, tomorrow we have the we, we have the beginning of the re, um, reporting season for US banks. So all the kind of big players um, are going to be reporting in the next few days. JP Morgan, Citigroup, uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley. They're going to be in focus. Uh, how their trading desk performed is going to be something, something that dealers are going to be looking out for. A lot of volatility in the financial markets in the last few months because of the health crisis has uh, has, has been a, has been a has seen in, as in many cases boosted trading revenue at the at the big banks, but also we've seen a fairly l large increase in the number of bad debt provisions because of the the, the pandemic. On Tuesday, we have China trade figures out. That gives indication of both internal demand and external demand. Obviously, imports being internal demand, exports being external demand. But keep in mind, uh, China sells, manufactures and sells a lot of uh, personal protective equipment, PPE, um, to, the, to the rest of the world. So if we have strong Chinese exports, that could be because there's a high level of PPE thrown into the mix. Uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, had third quarter results out. Um, one of the, one of their um their in 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 the running uh, for a potential COVID nineteen vaccine. So any relation any updates in relation to that will be in focus. Uh, we also have a special event from Apple during the week. Um, there's talk of an iPhone twelve being announced. Uh, Delta Airlines have their third quarter numbers coming out uh, on Tuesday. The U.S. airline section has been uh, has been focused the last uh, the last few sessions. President Trump has called for another. Uh, 25 billion dollar uh, relief package or a bailout package for the troubled uh, for the troubled sector. So any updates um, in relation to their funding is going to be in focus. Um, on Tuesday we also have UK unemployment numbers. Um, this, and this is going to be claim and count are probably is probably going to be the most important to watch out for within the overall set of numbers because they are the most recent figures. Um, we have US uh, CPI and, and US retails, um, US retail sales this week. 
it gives a good indication of actually consumer demand, basically, uh, particularly the retail sales. We see from more recent job reports that the unemployment rate in the US is coming down. Non-farm payroll figures show that more jobs have been, you know, jobs have, are, are being created. But are US, are US workers actually going out and spending money? That's going to be the real question uh, traders are going to be asking. On Wednesday, ASOS have full year numbers out. Uh, the online fashion crowd have, have, done a, have, have performed very well in terms of share price action in the last few months. Uh, we've had a couple of bullish updates from the company in the last few months, which has just propelled the share price higher and higher. Boots, um, sorry, Walgreens, uh, Boots Alliance, they have fourth quarter numbers coming out uh, on Thursday. As I mentioned, in relation to UK EU trade talks, Thursday the 15th could be uh, the um, could be a crucial date for UK EU trade, trade talks. And finally, uh, as, as we do every single um, Thursday, US jobless claims. Uh, starting off with the major indices, I'll be looking at the FTSE 100 first of all. So the FTSE achieved a multi-month high in June, at its highest level in June since, since, uh, since early March. But ever since then, we've broadly been, been pushing lower. But more recently, we found decent support, but seems to have found decent support level in around here, in around 5,800 down to 5,767. We've been pushing higher since. In fact, on Friday, we hit a three week high. Uh, we're currently just about above the important psychological 6,000 mark. So if you can hold above that metric, it's likely we could see further gains be made from here. If we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 100-day moving average, uh, which is this yellow line here at 6,096. If we go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the mid-September high in around 6,126. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the highs of late August in around 6,175. Um, any moves to the downside, you know, if, if we do have a dec decent break below, um, the early October low in around 5,972, we could head it back down towards 5,800. Let's take a look what's going on over in Germany. So the German market has been in better shape than the, than the FTSE 100. Uh, it was only a few weeks ago at the beginning of September, it, it hit a multi-month high, hit the highest level since early, since basically the crisis uh, was really kicking off in mid to late February. Um, we had the lower low, but since then we have been pressing higher. And if we look at this, notice how we're, we're, we're back above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which acted both as support along here and resistance along here. Um, so it, it, it seems to me this is a fairly important metric. If we can continue to hold above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, 12,934, it's likely we could see the wider. Um, the, the wider upward trend continue, which is also the more recent trend of the last few weeks. So if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the mid-September high in around 13,339. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the uh, the highs of early September, which, as I said, uh, was the uh, was this was the, the highs the highest seen um, in about seven months. If we do see a pullback and if we do have a de decent break below the 50 moving average, that could take us back down towards this yellow line here, the 100 moving average. We can see that, well, the market did trade below it um, in early October, but it, when, even when it traded below it, it still managed to close comfortably above it. So that area could act as support again, and that comes to play just north of 12,700. That's only really if we take out the lows of late September, this level here in at 12,339. Could then we begin to, could then we be begin to get worried and think that we're heading back down towards this red line, the 200-day moving average in at 12,158. Notice how the 200-day moving average acted nicely as support in late July. So if the metric has, has acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. Although there are no guarantees. Starting off with the foot, take a look now with the uh, with the the Dow Jones over in the US. So the Dow Jones racked up an all-time high in September, um, in early September. So the U.S. markets are in better shape than their European counterparts. But then, of course, you know, like other markets, that we, it endured a fairly decent sell-off, whereby we, we had the lower low, the lower high, and the lower low. But in the last few weeks, we've been pressing higher yet again. Um, only on Friday, we achieved the highest level um, since since early September, it's about a five-week high that was that was registered on Friday. 
we're pushing on lower or higher here we're comfortably above this blue line the 50 day moving average and while we remain above that metric it's likely that we could see further gains being made from here so we're to be honest we're about a million miles away from the all-time high that was achieved um in early september so if you press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting 29,000, and if you go beyond that we would be heading up towards uh, the all-time high that was achieved and that was comes into play around 29,000 well just just south of 29,200 moves to the downside could find some support from 28,000 you know a big psychological number and then that's not too far away from this blue line here the 50 moving average in a 27,884 sticking with the us let's look at look, look at the s p 500 similar situation an all-time high was achieved in early september we've added the lower low the lower high the lower low but, but in the last few weeks we've been pressing higher and in fact the the highs that we're going with that, that we're um on track to achieve today uh, we're currently expecting the s p 500 to open around 3492 once cash trading gets underway uh, that'll be you know the highest level seen since the third of september so we're talking like you know five week highs if we continue to press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting 3500 and a move beyond that could take us back up toward the uh, all-time highs that were achieved uh, at the beginning of september uh, if we do see a pullback in the s p 500 we could see support come into play in this zone here um in around 3400 notice how well this but from 3,414 um, up to around um, just say 3,400 south. This, this entire zone here could act as support. We can notice on a few occasions um, the area, broadly speaking, in around 3,400 uh, acted at resistance on the way up. And then if you take a look at the highs achieved on the um, on the 30 on the, on the sixth of, on the sixth of, of October, that was uh, 3,431. The lows on, on the 8th were 3,415 3, 4, 3, there, thereabouts. So the entire zone there could act as a, a support should we have a move to the downside. And it's only really if you have a decent break below this area here, um, which comes into play in at 3,341, uh, that the lows of early October, could then we begin to think, you know what, we are heading south, and then we're heading back potentially down towards 3,300. Take a look now at what's going on on the currency market, starting off with euro dollar. So the broad trend over the last few, few months has been very much to the upside. In fact, in early September, euro dollar hit its highest level in over two years. But whenever, you know, whenever whenever we have a, a significant move in one direction, it's not it's not it's not unusual to see a move in the opposite direction, which is precisely what we saw. We had a bit of a correction in euro dollar. The uh, was largely driven by an upward move in the dollar. But since then, we are see, we have seen a bit of a correction in that. So it seems that in the last few, the last few, week, couple of weeks, we have seen a continuation of the broader upward trend in in uh, in, um, in euro dollar. With as of uh, as on Friday, we closed above the 50-day moving average uh, for the first time in, in, in quite some, quite some while. This blue line here is the 50-day moving average. That comes into play just north of one spot 18. If we can continue to hold above that metric it's like a, again a more recent upward trend and which ties in with the broader upward trend is going to continue so if we press on higher from here we could be looking at heading up towards the early september highs in around one spot 1917 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at heading up towards the uh, the one spot 20 zone any moves to the downside could find some support in around here in a one spot 1684 and if you go below that we can head back down toward the kind of the low 116s in around kind of 116 12 116 13 and if you do have a decent break below that that could take us back down toward this zone here down around one spot 14. sticking with the currency markets let's take a look at pound dollar as i mentioned thursday the 15th of october could be a, a very important day for uk eu talks maybe it will maybe it won't um but nonetheless if you take a look at the price action in the last couple of weeks, the pound isn't that isn't that concerned about about the um the, about Thursday the fifteenth of October as a deadline. But sterling has been pushing higher the last few weeks. We're pr pretty much trading on this blue line here, the fifty-day moving average. Notice how it acted as the resistance not that long ago. 
it seems to have acted as resistance. It just about closed above it on Friday. We're kind of dancing around that metric for the time being. The trend for the last couple of weeks has been to the upside. If we can get, if we can retake the 50 moving average, which comes into play at one spot, 30, 27. If we can retake that and then have a decent move beyond that, I could take us up towards 132, up toward this area here, in at one spot, 32, 69. Beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the highs of early September. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards one spot, 35, 15. Uh, any move to the downside could find support from this blue, from this yellow line here, the 130 moving average in at one spot, 28, 10. And if you go below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards the lows of mid to late, mid to late September in around one spot, 26, 75. If we have a decent break below this, that will be, we'll be looking at heading, 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 um, that would, that would um, be multi-month lows, and that could point us down towards the lows seen in mid-July. Uh, coming up to commodities, wrapping things up with commodities, taking a look at the, um, with the, with the gold market. So in the last few weeks and months, there's been a fairly strong inverse relationship between gold and, and, and uh, the US dollar. Gold shares in dollars, so whenever you have a softer dollar, you tend to see a move to the upside in gold, and vice, and then whenever we see a stronger dollar, we tend to see a negative move in gold. Um, so we, we talked about how recently the pound and the euro have been gaining against the dollar because the dollar has been weak. And, and what do you know? We've seen we, we've seen strength in the US dollar and in, in the gold market because of it. So only on uh, on Friday just gone, uh, well even in today's session, uh, gold hit its highest level uh, in over in over uh, in about in about two over over two weeks. Um, the last few sessions, it's been moving, it's been kind of, it seems, seems to be kind of slotting in, it's been moving to the upside, so it's been slotting in with a broader trend to the upside. If we can hold above 1900, because we're currently trading around 1922, if we can hold above 1900, we could be looking at retesting this blue line, the fifth of the moving average in at 1938. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at testing the highs of mid September in around 1973. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking up heading up towards 2000. Notice how the 50 moving average acted as support in early September, so and also yet again in mid September. So, this metric is could be of importance. Um, obviously, there are no guarantees. If, the, if on the other hand, though, the market has, has a fail stick to pr break above and hold above the 50 moving average, if it runs out of steam and turns over on itself, we could be heading back down towards 1900. Uh, and that is, the, and then if we go below that, we could then potentially look at heading back down towards the lows of late September in, a, in around 1848. And it's only really if you have a break below 1848, because then we'd be then we'd be thinking, right, this trend um basically from the highs of of of, of, uh, of early August downwards, the neg that, that that negative trend is back is back in force. And should that be the case, we could be like heading back down towards this zone here down around 1800. Now lastly coming on to uh, the oil market bring crude oil December contract. So, even though we finish in the red on Friday, we've had a very positive run uh, in in the oil market last week. Uh, there was st strike action in um, oil workers were on strike in Norway that impacted supply concerns. In addition to that, um, all the news in relation to a hurricane descending upon the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and that and that meant that say over ninety percent of production in that region uh, was taken offline. That really ramped up the price of oil. But notice how the highs of October here failed to actually take out the highs of mid-September. So even though it was quite a bullish move, we haven't really shaken off this recent downward trend whereby we've had a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, and a lower high. So we'd really need to be taking out the highs of mid-September uh, before we could be before we could become confident that the wider upward trend is is uh, is still intact. So we, we've given back some of the ground uh, and on today and on Friday, we've given back some of the ground that was achieved between Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so, but let's not forget the kind of more recent negative trend of the last few weeks. If we do press on lower from here, if we go below 42, we could be like heading back down toward this zone here in a 41 spot 22, and a move below that could take us back down towards 40 bucks. And a move below 40 could take us down towards the early October lows in around 38, spot 79. On the other hand, if we, if um, the market is just having a bit of a correction 
before it continues in the more recent upward trend. If we do press on higher from here, if we take out the highs of early September, uh, sorry, mid-September, which come into play in around 44, spot 29. If you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up toward this zone here in around $45. And if you go beyond, beyond that, we could then be looking at potentially testing the, the, uh, the recent highs that were achieved, uh, the recent multi-month highs that were achieved in late August. That's all from this video. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.